so now we're going to start talking about human classification. People have been doing this for a while. As you can see, there are so many different types of people. People have different hair colors, eye colors, skin colors, different shapes to their face. There's a lot of different variation that we see here. And people have noticed this for a really long time. And there have been many attempts to classify both in modern day, but also in many traditional or older culture, cultures. Usually this classification breaks down into us versus them. So we have an in-group and an out-group. But let's go back and start talking with the ancient Greeks. They were kind of prejudiced. They had two categories, Greeks or barbarians. But the way they drew these lines is they cared mostly about politics rather than anything else. Were you democratic? You're good. Do you have a king? No, that's barbaric. So they really valued something with a refined or a more advanced political system. Um, in general, people, they recognized that people looked different because they lived in different environments. So they tied these different physical attributes very explicitly to a different environment. But because of that, that means that those differences were relatively superficial, so they could be changed. So the Greeks themselves didn't care as much about these physical characteristics, which are a big part of our racial divisions today. Next, let's talk about China. Um, we're mainly talking about Greek and China because these are the two cultures that have a lot of written history. So it's easier for us to get an idea of what they thought rather than other cultures. Um, in Ch ancient China, they viewed that balance was very important. And that was the most important. And if balance is best, then everything is best in the center. And of course, China is in the middle. It's the middle kingdom. So everything is best there. Um, they viewed that only the Chinese were truly civilized, 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 mm. and they were, of course, prejudiced against different cultures. This isn't really unique to China. This is really everybody. Everybody thinks where they come from is best and that nobody else is quite up to par. Um, they, again, thought these physical differences were due to different environments. So a very similar idea. Um, thank you to whoever made this graphic and put it on the internet. But this shows why um, China called themselves the Middle Kingdom, because there's stuff above them, there's stuff below them. So, of course, they're in the middle. Um, another important one to talk about is the Judeo-Christian tradition, especially since that is so important here in modern day Western societies. Um, they classified people as faithful or heathen. But the uh, cool thing about denoting it along religious grounds is it's very, very easy to change groups. All you need to do is to convert. Um, so this, none of these groups here are permanent when we're talking about religion. So in all of these things that we talked about, there are prejudice. Bigots are not new to humanity. Um, but they were drawing these lines along culture, religion, or politics. So all of these are, you know, very easy to change. Everybody was aware of human variation, but it was these other things that people cared more about. And all of these divisions can be changed very easily. So if this is where we started, where did race come from? If you look back, the very first use of race was really talking about a, uh, like, a horse race. Um, related to a swift course of a river or trial of speed. So we are not yet talking about um, race how we use it today. Um, and this happened in the uh, medieval period. But since now we're talking about racing horses, people really cared about their horses. So eventually we began to think of race as a lineage because we're thinking of the lineage of that really important racehorse. Um, so first it was hunting dogs and horses. If you've ever talked to somebody with like an official breed of dog, you'll know, you'll know what I'm talking about here. And eventually this meaning transitions or transferred to the nobility. So we had this lineage of good breeding of our nobles. So you might call the noble house of York, the race of York. Um, and then in, 
1684, Francois Bernier, we have the very first publication of race as, you know, a near modern, modern definition, um, a new division of the earth by the different species or races which inhabit it. Um, so you can see that, of course, this is in French, but now we're slowly seeing this transition to this modern concept. But if you think about how long humans have been on the earth, it's, uh, you know, about 200 or 300,000 years. This is very recent. Francois Bernier, he had a, uh, four different races. So his first race was Europeans, North African, Middle Easterners, Indian, the Indian subcontinent, and Central and Northern Asia and the New World. That's a lot of people in one grouping there. Um, his second race was Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, third was Eastern and Southeast Asia and Oceania. And then his fourth were the Lops or the Sami people of Northern Europe. Um, so if you look at this on a map here, the first race is like everyone, and then we have a few other groups that he's pointing out as significantly different. Um, you can see this isn't a particularly good classification because it's just like everyone and like, oh, you guys are a little too different to be to belong to us. Of course, as we know, the race concept only got more popular. And this is mostly due to European colonialism. So during this time, there was the increase in popularity in the idea of races. Um, partially it's because people were discovering new people and they wanted to classify them. That is uh, a human tendency. You just have to look at um, any particularly fastidious person and how they organize your house to see their house to see that. But another reason why race is more popular now is the Europeans need to justify their colonization of the world. So we're seeing the solidification of divisions of people and stereotypes because the Europeans need to justify that they deserve to take over the rest of the world. So racism is directly tied to colonialism, but also the slave trade. So here um, we see the very beginning of the slave trade in the 15th and 16th centuries but it only gets bigger and more intensive. So here we are seeing the additional solidification of racial concepts and ideas because of this economic incentive. Free labor means the people at the top can earn more money and be more successful at the expense of an entire group of people. And because we had these very easy divisions along identifiable skin color, which is impossible to change, that provided a really easy method for racist stereotypes to endure. So even though this is recent, only within the past several hundred years, it is unfortunately really powerful still in modern society. <music>